We've all grown up with animal heroes, Lassie, Fury, and who could forget the wonderful Mr. Ed? It's the language of animals that speaks to us. Well, tonight on Medically Speaking, we bring you a story about this amazing bond of love and friendship that helps kids in trouble. Please join us. I'm Dr. Katherine Benny. We welcome you to Medically Speaking. Yes, this is Medically Speaking. We have left the studio and gone to a remote location. This is a show that's brought to you, the community of York, as a service by SUSCOM 4 and the York County Medical Society. Amidst all these horses, think about it. We've traditionally used horses for transportation, labor, sports, and entertainment. We call them horsepower to signify all the great grandness of horses. We've named our cars Mustangs and Broncos. Sometimes we put wings on horses to give them magical powers. Well, the truth is, horses live in herds, somewhat like families. And you'll discover tonight how each individual horse, just like a person, has their own individual personality, mood, and attitude. Well, we harness these attributes to help us learn more about touching each other. And just as we touch a horse, we learn about ourselves and human relationships. And this journey will help human victims of abuse. This is a type of reality therapy. We've heard a lot about reality TV shows, but it's a reality show with a slightly different twist. You see, these horses themselves have been victims of abuse, just like their human counterparts that they are here to help. Now tonight, we can't have you call in with your questions, so we're going to introduce our guest. This is Tracy Young from Lost and Found Horse Rescue. Welcome tonight. Thank you, Dr. Benny. We are at the corner of, it looks like Valley Road and Nixon Drive, just right. adjacent to Nixon Park. That's right. And what kind of a horse farm is this? Well, my wife and I founded Lost and Found Horse Rescue about eight years ago as primarily a rescue for horses that have been abused and neglected. Uh, that was our primary focus. And, and what led you to do that? Well, my wife uh, has been involved with horses all of her life and shown quarter horses uh, across the country. And my experience was riding at state fairs when I was little. That was the extent of my horse uh, expertise. Uh, so we got married 15 years ago. Well, congratulations. Thank you. You're still together. Yes, we're still yeah. together. Uh, unlike marriages in Hollywood, we're on the East Coast, so things last a little longer, I believe. But we uh, got married 15 years ago, and we started the rescue eight years ago, and we saw that there was a need for helping horses that were unwanted. Not necessarily old or diseased or, or mean, they were just unwanted, much like dogs and cats at an SPCA shelter. Well, why should we be so concerned? What is the fate of these animals if people like you don't take them in? Well, that's an excellent question, and that's a question that's asked often of us is, why do we spend so much time and energy and resources into this effort? Uh, our belief is that the horse industry is much, uh, it's much like a, a reflection of society, where we live in a throwaway society. Typically, we're getting more and more into technology where we do less human communication. Uh, there's, if something isn't meeting our needs, we get rid of it, whether it's a human or whether it's an animal. And we believe we need to step up and take more responsibility for what God has given us. We need to be good stewards of what he's given us. And, and one of those things is horses. Uh, right now, it's legal to slaughter horses in this country and export them. Yes, slaughter them. Yes, they slaughter horses in this country for human consumption over in Europe, primarily, for them to, to consume. Well, why are they consuming more horse meat? Well, a big part of it is, uh, in this country at least, it's lack of responsibility, uh, overbreeding, and there's a number of different variables in that. Basically, there's a dumping ground at the auction for horses. And there's no uh, check and balances with uh, the equine system, per se. So a lot of these horses slip through the cracks. They're unwanted. They're young, healthy, 
beautiful, sound horses, they're unwanted. So they end up going to the auction, percentage of them get sold for slaughter. Back in 1990, the USDA uh, is the one who tracks this. Uh, there was over 350,000 horses slaughtered in this country. Wow. And most of the meat being exported. So you go to the auction to Good. get them? My wife goes to, to uh, the auction every Monday. And what we do is we go back to what we call the killer pens. And we look for horses. Well, that sounds ominous, doesn't it's, it? It's, it's, it's very sad because if you go there and you see these animals, uh, it's not their choosing. Mm -hmm. uh, and they're in situations where they have no voice. And a lot of them go to slaughter. And we go to the, my wife goes to the kill pens. She looks at the horses. And unfortunately, we can't bring them all home. Uh, we don't have enough room. Even though my wife feels that we could have more, uh, I keep telling her, no, we're limited. So she looks at horses that have good dispositions and uh, are somewhat able to be uh, adopted out as, as rideable horses. Not that that's not enough, but is there any other purpose for this farm? Yeah. Uh, we started with uh, rescuing horses and that being our main mission when we started eight years ago. Uh, my background is uh, with counseling. I worked at the Children's Home of York for 14 years as a drug and alcohol counselor and as an administrator at the emergency shelter. One of the things working down here I found was it's very calming down here around the animals. Uh, horses have, uh, it's, it's, really, it's really weird how they can have a relationship with you, how they, they seem to be able to sense how you're feeling mm -hmm. uh, more than any other animal. And so one day I was down here working with uh, probation, York probation. They sent a work crew down. And I'm working with some of these kids who have had checkered past. And I saw the connection they were making with some of these horses. These were city kids, never been around horses, but they were drawn to the horse. You know, this huge horse, the, the majesticness of it. <laughs> well, here they come right on cue. We couldn't have planned that any better. Uh, but I saw the connection, and as we were talking and, and working, I was able to connect with these kids mm -hmm. about why they were doing community service and talk about their lives. And I was able to share some of my history of being addicted to drugs and alcohol for a number of years, overdosing, should not be here uh, alive, uh, or spending the rest of my life in prison, being in situations that I think they could relate to. So there actually is a connection between horses and therapy. Absolutely. And that was something uh, two years ago, uh, Lori Ann Spagnoia, the director, uh, president of Children's Home of York, contacted me through a, a mutual friend and said something to me about, hey, have you ever heard of equine-assisted psychotherapy? Equine-assisted psychotherapy. psychotherapy. Wow. Isn't that an impressive name? It really I is. I said, Lori Ann, that is a very impressive name. I said, no, I don't know anything about it. She's like, well, check out these websites. So I got online, checked out some websites, very interesting reading. Went to a horse show two days later down at Timonium, Maryland, and there was a stand there, a booth, regarding equine-assisted psychotherapy. Never before have I seen a booth like this. So I talked to the people at the booth. They share this information with me. I leave there, come home. I'm on the internet for five, six hours on different websites. Uh, it was a feeling of knowing some people say it's your niche. It's like I knew at that time this is why I was created. This is why I went through the drug and alcohol addiction. This is why I went through being a counselor at the Children's Home of York and having that experience. To work with animals, specifically horses, and abused children, and having the abused animals and abused children coming together and healing each other. So currently you have the horses here, Yes. and you have the children from the children's home coming to the farm? That's correct. I have two groups that come down currently, and we're working on possibly getting some more of their group homes coming down here to participate. I have the girls' center, which is uh, girls, we have an average of 10 that come down once a week, and we work with Tyndall House, which is a young boys' uh, group home that they have, and they come down once a week. So they come down once a week for the... Uh, the girl center is a six to nine month placement, so they come down every Wednesday, and then the, the little boys home, Tyndall House, is a long term placement, a uh, year, two years, and they come down every Wednesday. Well, is this like pet therapy? Do they come and pet the horses or groom them? That's, a, that's probably the biggest difference regarding the horses. There's uh, therapeutic riding, 
which has been around for a long time and serves a purpose. Uh, this is not therapeutic riding. It has nothing to do with getting warm fuzzies from the horse. It has nothing to do with riding. It has nothing to do with horsemanship. It has everything to do with relationships. It has to do with allowing the horse to be able to mirror the behavior of the, of the, of the child. And so there are some times when we do grooming and we'll pick up feet and clean feet and we'll have them walk. Uh, one girl uh, after the session was walking the horse back to the barn and she was talking to the horse and I said, well, that's interesting. Is he answering you back? And she joked and said no. And I said, what are you talking to the horse about? She's like, well, my father didn't show up for a family session, so I'm talking to the horse about it. Well, as you can see, it's not just horse play. Horses have size and presence that just can't be ignored. And a very non-traditional type of therapy is this equine or horse-assisted psychotherapy. It's absolutely empowering. Stay with us to find out more about how it's done. Welcome back to Medically Speaking. I'm Dr. Katherine Benny at Lost and Found Horse Rescue. And today we're discussing a new type of therapy called equine-assisted psychotherapy. It's called a type of co-facilitated therapy. It involves an equine specialist or somebody who's very familiar with horses as well as a therapist. And we now begin this segment with our therapist, Laura Pennington. Hi. Laura, welcome to Medically Speaking. Thank you very much. Thank you. You have a special certification in equine assisted psychotherapy. Correct. Big words. Correct. Yes, I got that in June this year. I've been working with Tracy Young at the Lost and Found Horse Rescue since August, but I just got my certification this June. How did you get interested in this type of therapy? Actually, this is what uh, attracted me to working at Children's Home New York Girls Center was that they had this. Uh, type of therapy offered. I've always been interested in animals, helping humans, and the human-animal interaction, but I think this drew me specifically to this job. It's been said, Laura, that children who are abused are at risk. What are they at risk for? Um, children who are abused, uh, not just sexually, but emotionally and physically, are at risk for a variety of emotional and behavior problems um, that can range from depression, anxiety, school problems, uh, drug and alcohol issues, lots of behavior problems, um, self-destructive behaviors, anything that they use to take the pain away. They're also, as they grow older, at risk of continuing to have um, dysfunction and continuing to possibly be a victim or, as an adult, become an abuser themselves. This kind of therapy involves having the children participate in activities. Mm -hmm. What is the purpose of the activity? The purpose of the activity is to give the client a uh, real-life situation with a horse that symbolizes human relationships. And it gives them an opportunity to problem solve, to uh, figure out what works, what doesn't work, um, to have the horse confront their behavior and their emotions. The horse acts as a mirror to their emotions. And if, for example, if the uh, client gets angry, the horse will respond to that honestly and confront them on that. They'll either get scared, depending on the horse's personality, or they will get defiant. I'm not doing what you tell me to do because you're angry at me. And that gives the uh, client feedback and insight into whether their behavior works or not with their own relationship. You used an interesting word, mirror. Mm -hmm. So by watching the horse's reaction, they learn about their own behaviors? Correct, definitely. And does that imply that behavior can then be changed if you realize the cause and effect? Yes, and in fact, um, not just realizing it, but doing it, because in fact, to get the activity completed, they do have to make changes because what they're doing is not working. And they'll either give up or they won't get the horse to complete the activity, so they may have to make changes. And by doing the changes, they are gonna make changes internally. This type of therapy is relatively new, so I assume, or presume, shall we say, that you've been trained classically as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think this type of therapy is as effective as traditional talk therapy in your office? It's a whole new office setting. Yes, actually, I think it's more effective. Um, I feel that because it's based in uh, solution-focused and reality therapy where the client is in the here and now doing 
uh, the changes rather than talking about the changes, that experiential learning is um, given to them, and I think the effects are much uh, longer lasting and more effective than traditional talk therapy. The defenses are down because they're working with an animal, because they are outside, um, they don't have the normal defenses that they would in an office. This is relatively short-term therapy, though, isn't it? Correct, correct. Um, it could be long-term, depending on their stay at the Children's Home of York. Um, but they a stay can isn't a lifetime. No, definitely not, six to nine months. So they may only be exposed to this for six months, four months, nine months. Um, but the changes are long-lasting. They are long-lasting, even though it's a very short, mm -hmm. interventional time period. Correct. Very interesting. Correct. Um, I think the reason for that is, uh, again, like I said, the defenses are down, so the uh, changes that can occur therapeutically um, are changes that occur much faster rather than, say, ten in the office sessions, maybe three or four out in the field can, can create the same amount of change. Also, another reason that you can see the change is long-lasting is uh, in the future there's a very good chance they're going to run into a horse again and everything that they learned out in the field will come back to them as soon as they see that horse, whether it be on the side of the road in a field or they actually get to uh, touch and, and be with a horse. A traditional therapy cites problem areas and then goals for treatment. Mm -hmm. Is mm -hmm. that approach used out in the field? Definitely. Um, their treatment plans back at the Children's Home New York Girls Center um, mirror the, the same goals that this treatment uh, provides. Some of the goals would be to create self-awareness, similar to our groups such as yoga and art therapy, to create um, empathy, to, um, to deal with relationship problems, um, develop trust, and to create lasting behavior changes. Because they're doing the behavior changes here, um, those can then be transferred to Almost the sounds like there's some area where all of us could use a little bit of help. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> are there some disorders, if you will, or problems, shall we call them mm -hmm. problem areas, that are more effectively treated with this kind of therapy? Um, I believe that any behavioral or emotional problem um, can be treated, um, substance abuse, eating disorders. Um, I know that one behavior that the uh, horses exhibit is something called cribbing, where they actually uh, chew on the top of the fence and inhale at the same time, and it's addictive. And one of the uh, activities is to have the girls come up with a treatment plan for them to stop that behavior and it's very similar to their struggle with any addiction that they have or eating disorders. Um, other behavioral emotional problems that, that are effective is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, um, relationship problems, depression, and anxiety. Well, like does that. dealing with such large animals bring out fear in children? Um, fear to an extent but then respect I believe. Um, the horses can tell when they're when the child is afraid and a lot of times they change their behavior around them to I guess comfort the uh, the kids um, but I, I think fear in a, in a way uh, brings about a similarity to other challenging uh, situations in their life um, such as with parents or friends or teachers they're always going to run into challenges and fears and it seems safe once they see the horse responding to them. Are there any types of behavioral problems that you definitely would not consider this type of therapy for? I would be hesitant to name specific. Um, I would just say that the child has to have the uh, mental awareness and the physical capability of maintaining safety out in the field. Mm -hmm. so now, in, in medicine, we're now very concerned about costs, and mm -hmm. this may be great therapy, but is it really practical from a cost-effective standpoint? Definitely. Um, anytime you work with a group rather than an individual, um, it's cost-effective. There's also all sorts of dynamics that can occur in group settings that cannot be replicated in an individual setting because there's real-life situations. Um, the, the defenses are down, like I said, so therapy happens much quicker. That's cost-effective. Also, the collaboration between Children's Home New York and Lost and Found Horse Rescue is considered cost-effective. Uh, we can have a partnership where we can both continue doing what we do best. Uh, Children's Home New York doesn't have to worry about housing and feeding horses, and Lost and Found Horse Rescue can continue doing that and not worry about hiring therapists and housing.
Well, thank you very Jim much for sharing with us these wonderful thank insights about an exciting new form of therapy. You're welcome. As you can see, equine-assisted psychotherapy challenges kids without being threatening. It breaks down the defense barriers and also keeps their attention. And through the activity, the children can rapidly see the cause and the effect of their behaviors. And this allows for processing or discussion of the activity afterwards and for making positive changes. We'll be right back with you. We now go outside for a prearranged activity. And although the activity is structured, it's impossible to predict what's going to happen. We're dealing with a live horse and a person who each have their own individual mood, personality, and attitude. Let's watch. The rules are, as Mr. Tracy said, listen, uh, that you have to be between the buckets at all times, everyone who's in line, except for the person that's trying to get the horse in the pocket, and you can't touch the horse. You can't touch the, the horses, and you, when you're in line, you cannot talk. The only time that you can talk is if you're the person who's going out to try to get the horse in the pocket. That's the only time you can talk. When you're standing in line, you have to be between the buckets, and you can't talk. The only time you can talk is when it's your turn to go out and shoot the ball into the pocket, or here it's going to be shoot the horse into the pocket. Come inside with us now as we begin to process or discuss what's happened out in the field. Equine Associated Psychotherapy is a non-traditional form of treatment in which we use a horse as a tool for emotional growth and learning. We've just witnessed a session which explains to us how this treatment is experiential. There's first the activity in the field in which the kids have an activity with a horse and then come in to discuss the feelings, the patterns of behavior, and what they've seen in the field. It's really a moving experience. We're going to take you for a walk with one of the participants who was in on today's session. I think you'll find it most interesting. Have you ever been on a farm before? Yes, actually, I used to take horseback ridings when I was around 10 or 11 years old. Mm -hmm. So you feel comfortable around horses? Yes, very comfortable. And do you have a favorite horse here on the farm? Yes, actually, this horse that we have here with us, Bree, is my favorite horse. And why would that be? She's just so kind and gentle. I can see that. <laughs> what do you see when you look into the eyes of these horses? You know I'm an ophthalmologist, so I have to ask that question. I just see kind, calm beings that want to be loved. I want to be loved. I think that's true of every human being as well. Yes, most definitely. I mean, how do you feel when you hear the tragic stories about these horses? It hurts a lot, actually. No animal or human should be treated the way that some of these horses have been treated. I noticed in today's session you made the comment that some of these things are really freaky. Explain to us what you meant by that. Well, it's just strange how you can be going through something in life and you'll talk to someone and what they have to say is directed towards you, but they don't know. And the connection is just amazing. It's actually helped me to move on a lot, what people say. It's inspiring. Would you say then that coming here has been a good thing for you? Yes, I would say that. Yeah. Well, getting to know ourselves is sometimes very difficult. But our equine friends have a tremendous ability to help us to understand more about ourselves. It's absolutely empowering that the young people that come through here will experience sometimes for the first time ever what it is to be loved, what it is to have a respectful relationship, and to feel competent themselves. It's one hoof step at a time. Welcome back to Medically Speaking. I'm Dr. Katherine Benny with Tracy Young, who is an equine or horse specialist, if you will, at the Lost and Found Horse Rescue, located just outside of Jacobus at the edge of Nixon Park. Tracy, who else is a member of this team that does the equine-assisted psychotherapy? Equine-assisted psychotherapy is set up uh, so that it's done with co-facilitation. 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 There needs to be two people in, a therapist, a licensed therapist, as well as a horse specialist, a horse person. And uh, just like in most group therapies, you have co-facilitation. 
a big part of that out here is just because of what all is going on. There's so much action, so there's a safety issue as well as the therapeutic end of it where you just need as many eyeballs out there as possible because there's so many different things that happen. So let's just summarize the experience. The kids arrive from the children's home. Mm -hmm. They sit down, circle the wagon wheel, and review the uh, events or the happenings of the week before. Right. Just a, it's just a time for them to, you know, sometimes uh, there's an incident that happens. One thing that I find with working with the girls is there's always drama. Drama. <laughs> <laughs> and my past experience has always been working with adju adjudicated young boys. And so this has been an eye-opener for me. But there's always drama, so I want to kind of get that out of the way. You know, who stepped on whose toes and family sessions and that. So we spend five minutes uh, kind of getting that out. Uh, and then we come out and do the activity. The activity. Mm -hmm. The activity lasts for about? Uh, anywhere from a half hour, 45 minutes, uh, depending on the activity, depending on the weather. Uh, there's, there's a couple of variables, but typically half hour, 45 minutes, we do the activity. Uh, depending on the weather again, if the flies are biting, uh, we'll, do, we'll process out in the field with the horses. Uh, so not actually come back in to discuss it, you might even discuss it in the field. We, whatever happens, the, the beautiful thing about this type of therapy is you can never plan what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you need to be flexible and go in the direction that the kids take it. It's not about uh, the therapist or myself, we come up with the activity, but we let the, the, the kids create whatever they want to happen there, and then we go with them in the direction they want to go. And then at the end of this experience, shall we call it, mm -hmm. There's a journal writing. What's the purpose of right. the journal? The journal writing is something that I heard another group in the Midwest was doing, uh, and that is a time for uh, the kids to kind of wind down and kind of reflect on the activity, whether it's feelings, thoughts, uh, triggers, and for them to get that down on paper. Sometimes they draw pictures. Uh, often, I have one girl who no longer comes here. She was discharged. She, when we would touch base in the beginning, I would ask her how she's feeling, how she's doing. She'd say, I feel blah. And that's as much as I could get out of her, blah. And that same day, she went down to the creek, uh, put her feet in the creek, wrote in her journal. Oftentimes the girls will allow me to read their journal and they want me to read their journal and, and she let me read her journal and she had over 70 feelings. So it might the facilitate journal. them expressing themselves wherein they might have more difficulty Absolutely. doing it in the group format. Absolutely. And it's something that's theirs. They have. So they can look back uh, to past sessions and they can remember oh this is something I was going through with my family at the time this is how I was feeling and here I came through that mm -hmm. so it's it's a journal for them to keep it's theirs now you do this over a period of time and you must see changes in these girls do you have a favorite story that might exemplify the change a favorite or, or how much time do we have or just, a, just <laughs> we, a short little story have, or yeah, a favorite I'll, story to share with I'll us I'll summarize uh, a story there's just like today, okay, with, with the group down here, uh, there's always something that, that comes up for at least one of the girls that they connect with. Uh, we had a situation where one of the girls was down here. She was, I would say, the alpha horse, the lead horse in, in the girls' center. The rest of the girls were afraid of her. Uh, she used different behaviors to keep them away. Uh, she would threaten them. She would be physical with them just a stare and the girls learned very quickly that they needed to keep space from this girl. Well, we came out and did an activity and the activity was to capture one of the horses, halter the horse and get a horse over the jump. All the other girls wanted one of the more docile horses to work with. This young lady wanted the one that was running around like a maniac uh, and seemed very fright frightening. Matter of fact, the rest of the girls were all huddled around me. Mr. Tracy, save us, that horse is crazy. And that one horse kept running around. This young lady chose to break away from the group and was chasing this horse. And at some points would stand in front of it with her hands out as if to stop it, and which is very dangerous and risk taking, which reflected her behavior and her past. This is a girl who was a multiple rape victim, a girl who had a uh, large amount of trauma in her life. Uh, so she was very risk-taking. Risk so that was typical of her behavior, which was good to give her in feedback. But during this exercise, she was really persistent with getting this horse. And so the end of the session came, the rest of the girls came in. Uh, 
the conference room and I stayed out with this girl. And I said to her, I said, what is the reasoning why you're so bent on getting this worse? The rest of the girls are afraid of this worse. And she said, Mr. Tracy, the horse is misunderstood. The horse isn't mean, isn't aggressive, but the horse has learned to behave this way to protect itself. And the more she's talking about the horse, the more she's talking about herself. And that is really the magic of having these horses here is it allows the girls to focus on the horse, the horse's behavior, and to transfer their thoughts and feelings onto the horse. And the key is for the therapist and myself to pick up on that and to maybe have the girl explore down a certain road. As so, the therapist says, it becomes like a mirror. That's right. It's a beautiful mirror to the girl that she cannot uh, argue with because uh, the horse is an honest creature. The horse is honest. And the horse knows nothing about her past. The horse isn't judgmental. And so it makes for a wonderful messenger of that message. So with this young girl, she tried this and tried this, sat down on a jump. We started talking. The horse eventually came around to the back of her and stood behind her. She looked over her shoulder and said, what took you so long? And reached up, grabbed the halter, and then walked the horse over the jump. And for her, in processing, we were, she was able to connect how she gravitates to people that are like her. And that oftentimes gets her in trouble. It's absolutely empowering. Absolutely. We applaud your efforts. And thank you so very much for allowing us to share in the experience with you. Thank, thank you, you for coming down. Oh, my pleasure. Equine Associated Psychotherapy is not about horsemanship or having a horse as a pet or about riding. It involves setting up activities with a person or a group of people that involve skills. And these skills bring up issues, things like teamwork, accepting responsibility, problem solving, creative thinking, and nonverbal communication. It's the thread of life that bonds all animals, the resonance or flow of energy between animals and people. It's truly the bond of love and friendship. This has been Medically Speaking. It's sponsored by Suscom 4 and York County Medical Society. I'm Dr. Catherine Benny. <laughs> Wishing you good health, happiness, and a great week. We'll see you soon.